Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Carlos Brando. Thank you so much for having us today. Uh, today, we're talking with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, the expert in immigration uh, for over 45 years now, actually 46 years working in the immigration field and helping thousands of families every single year get an immigration relief. So thank you so much for joining us today, either on our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel in English. Uh, please feel free to send your questions uh, to ask any question that you have regarding to immigration. And uh, Ms. Wong is going to be answering your um, questions live. And the good news is that this answer is absolutely free for you. So uh, please give us a message, send us a message, or if you need more information, you can give us a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. That's the phone number that you need to call in order to talk to the attorney, Mario W. Wong, or one of the attorneys in the law firm that are all awesome working with the attorney, Mario W. Wong. Let's welcome the attorney. She's the star of this show, uh, Ms. Wong. Thank you so much for having us today and welcome to the show. How, how are you feeling? I'm good and thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. How does it feel to have been working in this field for 46 years already? It's wonderful. I'm going back on the road tomorrow. I'll be in our office in Columbus. Monday, I'm flying to New York. Wow. Tuesday and Wednesday, I'll be working in our Raleigh, North Carolina office. And Thursday and Friday, back to Nashville office. So I'm sort of excited about that. Wow, that's going to be yeah. a, a very active week. I think you haven't done that, uh, like traveling all week long since the pandemic started. Correct. So you have been traveling, but not that often uh, to all of the cities, but that's good. That's good to hear that you are traveling. That keeps you um, feeling young. alive. <laughs> you could say it, young yeah, and vibrant. Yeah, that keeps you alive, that keeps yeah. you active. And uh, you, are doing it, you are doing awesome. And every day you are doing it better. So thank you so much for all you do because somehow, Ms. Wong, we know you don't need to do it. But you do it for us. So that's good. That's the good thing that you do it for the people. You do it because you love what you do. You do it because it's your life motivation. So that's the awesome thing is you are not thinking about the the how to get a benefit or how you, you get a uh, profit out of it. Of course, we need to work for the profit and you have a lot of people working for you and they need to maintain their families, but also you do it. The main reason you do it is because you love the people and you love what you do. And we thank you for doing it, uh, this for 46 years. And uh, Also, just to mention that President Jimmy Carter who is 100 years old right now, or 99 years old, he's in, uh, he's in the terminal phase of his life, and palliative care is going on. But a couple of weeks ago, he was just working. <clears throat> and some people think that he wouldn't be alive if he didn't work that long. So that's why people need to work. And we want to see you at 99 years old working out there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, Ms. Wong. So uh, talking about immigration and getting into the, the topic that we need to talk, um, this new rule about the asylum, this has been one of the topics, the, 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 trending, the trending topics in the last three or four years, even during the Trump administration, that was one of the main topics and now it's coming back there to become one of the mm, trending topics in immigration because a lot of people are submitting applications for asylum, but some of them are being denied for some reasons. So uh, what is this new rule about? Uh, what do I need to think before finding asylum at this stage of the administration. Right. There is a proposal now uh, for public comment. We have 60 days to do 
make our comments saying that if you lived in another country, so a lot of refugees and people like us, you know, we go from example, we're going to Venezuela, we, you know, it was horrible, horrible. So we went to Colombia and then, you know, and then we go to Ecuador. So it's like from country to country. So the 62 day rule is talking about if you had lived in another country aside from your home country and if you did not file for asylum there you are not allowed to file or to be approved in america that's really a, a, a sort of interesting concept because on january 1st of 1994 and i remember i was a young practitioner the new law started without any announcement, without the 90-day rule, saying that unless you file asylum within a year, you may be denied. So whatever America is doing now, we are trying to eliminate or limit um, the whole asylum thing. So since about 30, 40 years ago, uh, the Vietnam people, um, because of the war, they're going to Thailand refugee camps, stay for years and come to America, then the Laos, the Cambodians, and then the Uyghurs from China, and then, um, you know, the Jewish people through the years, and the Irish, the whole. So this is the newest thing. We don't know how it go yet, but through the years, asylum has always been under attack. I mean, they can talk about you only allow 27,000 people, but that the promise at the court system is really jammed up. So people who really could have won, they could not win. But the people who really should not be winning, um, they're sitting there and that's what they want. So the asylum law is in a mess. So I don't blame the White House for coming up with all these ideas. Um, and private lawyers like us, we should also exercise restraint and not to, you know, to, to screw up the system because we have cases like this morning, I was talking to a client and she was talking about Wawa. So I thought, oh, that's very interesting. Uh, Wawa is where uh, you are abused, man or woman, either your parents, spouse or child abuse you. So I asked her, who is abusing you? It turned out her child just turned 21. And because she, she came to America illegally, she would not be able to get the green card through the child. So apparently she's reading all these TikTok and all these things about, oh, if your child abuse you. So I asked her, tell me why she was abusive towards you. Is she living with you? Is she helping you pay your pay your house expense? Where's your partner? Do you have a partner? Where's the father of the child? So I really went into the whole abuse. And I was like, actually, she was laughing herself. She said, oh, I've seen a therapist. My therapist tells me, tells me I'm depressed. I'm, I'm like, you didn't know you're depressed? She said, I always we uh, we fought a lot because the daughter doesn't want to give her rides, you know, to go to a grocery store because she doesn't drive, and then the daughter doesn't want to, um, you know, keep telling her that you know she'll never get the green card. So don't waste more money. And actually, the daughter is right. I mean, and I communicate with the daughter. I'm not saying the daughter is right. I'm not saying I'm not going to help her. But what I'm saying is that she's in a good place she's in america she has her work permits you know she has her 42 b filed um but we cannot use the daughter to get her the green card and then she's like oh uh, my my depression has really caused my daughter's abuse so i said wait we all have children i think especially daughters they're normally they'll tell mom everything oh i don't want to give you a ride i said my daughter tells me the same thing my son tells me the same thing you know so and i both of us actually ended up laughing and then she said oh would that hurt my daughter if i do i said no because you don't even need a police record to do well she said okay okay maybe at least uh tiktok is right <laughs> i can get my green card i'm like oh but you know that's what i was thinking my gosh if you if people listen to tiktok or listen to uh google you know, map or something to come up with this. I'm just going on and on, but I'm just saying sometimes we should not, just because Wawa is a good law and just because you are, de you may be depressed or you are depressed because your psychologist tell you you're depressed because of abuse from a daughter. You know, all children, I mean, they give us headaches, you know, that's American children. Um, but so I said, okay, just write me a story. I'll figure it out. You know, but it's yes, and that happens, and that makes a lot of sense as well. And mm -hmm. 
yeah, it's a, a bunch of different kind of culture that we face here in this country. And we don't know how people are raising their, their kids. Um, but the, the thing is that everybody thinks that they are doing the right thing. So uh, it, it's, it's the big issue in this country because maybe I see how you raise your kids and maybe I can say you are wrong, but in your mind you're good. And then you see how I'm raising my kids and you say, hmm, what Juan is doing is, is very bad. And it's just a culture difference, uh, beliefs, and everything is, is turning different in this country. But uh, it's good to have a general knowledge, a general view about what's going on in this country. And just be careful what you do in this country, uh, because maybe if that's normal in your country, that's what Ms. Wong says, Maybe that's normal in your country, but in the United States, that could be illegal. So uh, you need to be careful about that. Okay, Ms. Wong, let's start with this next question here. And this person says, um, I got my green card through marriage last year, but honestly, my husband has been a pain doing drugs and many bad stuff. I had to leave him not very long ago. Now he's basically blackmailing me asking me for money that I don't, that if I don't give him certain amounts of money, he will call immigration and say that everything was a fraud and that I supposedly paid him to get my green card, which is all a lie. Uh, what can I do to defend myself? I have, all I have done has been real and things just didn't work out well with him. And That's an interesting question. I get a lot of situations like that because then the man thought, oh, you know, she doesn't come home at night. She's working too hard. Um, maybe she's just using me. Like you said, everybody thinks they're right, you know? So um, if you want to be proactive, and I've done cases like that before, I would even write a letter to immigration, to the American embassy, um, and just tell them or to um, wherever and keep a daily journal. I would write a letter, be proactive and say that, you know, I've been blackmailed. Um, this is my real marriage. The, the issue is I presume she only got the green card for two years. So one year and eight months, she'll have to file a 751. So probably he's threatening her that he's not going to help her file it, but that's okay. Love is not slavery, which means that uh, you may want to protect yourself by being proactive and write immigration letters and emphasize you are the alien and you're not the USC because normally um, the citizen write derogatory, this is what we call derogatory information. So another thing to do is the 751, if you're separated, especially if you won't sign your papers, you could not get a green card. So you have to be either divorced or remain married to file a joint. If you're separate, it's no good. So another thing is maybe get divorced, but collect all the bona fides. Divorce doesn't mean you're not gonna get a green card. Divorce only means that you have enough of it. Either you, in the olden days, when the new law first came out, that only one party could do it. Now it's, the law is a lot, actually a lot more liberal now uh, when it comes to marriage cases. So. You don't need to worry, maybe keep a daily journal. If you do go to the shelter, because if you leave the house, make sure you keep a record of that. Another way to do it is there is a, this is a Wawa case. That means if he's threatening you, but it has to be like sort of serious abuse. I mean, money issue, we all argue husband and wife, you know? Um, so immigration does look at that, but maybe it's a Wawa case that we need, uh, we could do an abuse case. So not all else will end poorly. Uh, on the other hand, think about it because a relationship is a relationship. We all have, have our problems. So um, maybe sit down and talk to him, maybe go see a marriage counselor. Maybe if he files for divorce, you file for divorce, you can tell the court that you're not ready for divorce and ask for reconciliation. These are all things. But remember, there's three things that's involved in divorce. Number one, the actual financial settlement, um, you know, the, because you, he signed the 864 agreeing to support you for 40 quarters, if not for life or until you become a citizen. So that's a divorce issue. The second issue is the grief, the pain that, you know, the breaking up of a relationship. Then the third issue is the green card. So if I were you, I would not, or your husband, 
I would not talk about just green card, green card, because it really does hurt someone's feeling. Instead of trying to maintain the intact of the marriage, you talk about, oh my gosh, if you divorce me, I couldn't keep my green card. That's hurtful, you know? So, but remember, whenever you argue with each other, whatever happens to how you feel, because it does express yourself in words or actions, think of the love, the reason why you got married in the first time, the, 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 and then think of your green card. Maybe they'll really help. There's sometimes the pressure of the green card is difficult. Yes, you already have your green card, right? Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And please, if you need more advice, don't forget that you can call the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. The attorney, Margaret W. Wong, will be traveling this week. <clears throat> And next week, actually, so tomorrow we'll be in Columbus, in the Columbus office. Uh, if you live in Columbus, you can just call. Her phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. And also Monday, she will be in New York. You are going back to New York. Tuesday and Wednesday, she will be in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Thursday and Friday, she will be in Nashville office. And uh, March the 9th, she will be here in the city of Atlanta. So the phone number, don't forget, is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Hello, I have a court hearing tomorrow. I entered and had a parole in. I filed for asylum, but still waiting on receipt notice. Should I go by myself to that court tomorrow? Is it too late? To hire an attorney, I am scared. Oh, don't be scared. As long as you keep going to court the first time, you don't need to go to a lawyer, explain to the court that, you know, you need time to find a lawyer, they'll give you a second hearing. And then, but make sure that you be careful because the time may stop. Anytime you're asked to postpone a case, the asylum clock, the 151 days will stop, but they're under Biden and, um, uh, uh, Trump, there were new laws saying that at this the, uh, on this clock stuff. So for now, don't worry about it. Go yourself tomorrow. It's not too late. But I always recommend people when you're hiring lawyers, don't just go to a lawyer that does a lot of advertising or just you saw them. I know I have clients who say, oh, I saw you on Facebook. I really like you. I said, whoa, 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 stop, you know, because this is your life. You need to really maybe interview one or two or three lawyers. They're always someone you like. Uh, better or worse, feel it out. So you, you're you right, you may be a little bit too late, absolutely go to court tomorrow. Most judges are really not bad. It's just they're doing their job, we're doing ours. You know, we all have a role to play. It's like a theater, you know, that's the judge is doing her thing or his thing. The ACC is doing his thing or her thing. Your lawyer is doing your thing or her thing. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. The phone number is, don't forget, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. The attorney Margaret W. Wong has offices in nine cities of the United States of America, Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is 216-279-3984, 46 years plus uh, of experience working with the immigration field and helping thousands and thousands of families every single year and helping them get an immigration relief. So if you want some references, you can go to Google, you can go to YouTube, you can go to uh, Facebook, and you will see how people love Ms. Wong for all she's doing for 46 years. So if you need to talk to a really expert person, uh, you need to talk to the attorney Margaret W. Wong, and the phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. The next question, Ms. Wong, is coming. Uh, good morning. How can I do if I have a removal order for an asylum denial, but then got TPS and got married to an U.S. citizen? That's a very, very good question. That's okay. TPS, you should apply. If I were you, I would apply for parole. The law is very clear now. Unlike Trump and, you know, Trump took off, oh, it's horrible. But now uh, apply for parole, leave and come back. There is a headquarter memo just came out a few months ago. You still need to do a joint motion 
and then apply for green card. But it's very clear. Number one, do parole, leave the country and come back. Number two, do that motion. Number three, file for your green card. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. So, um, well, if you need more information, just give us a call, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. We have some questions coming in through our uh, inbox, so I'm going to ask the first one of them is, um, do you have representatives in San Francisco? for a green card renewal, San Francisco, California, I think. Right. Uh, we have a lot of cases in San Francisco, more because it's a really good court. It's not as mean as Los Angeles and people there are nice. But we don't have an office. Actually, we have an office. Uh, we had an office in Los Angeles. I just closed it. I couldn't handle it because Los Angeles is not nice. But it's okay. You don't need a lawyer uh, to do the green card extension. I don't mean, do you, I don't know if you mean the 10 year extension. You already had the green card or the two-year extension because you're married in America and do the 751. So you don't, number one, you don't need a local lawyer. Number two, a lot of 751s are approved without even interview. We do cases around the country. So if you need help, uh, I could help you, but if you are doing only the 10-year green card, even if you have a criminal record, it should not be too hard. Uh, but if you're doing the 751, and if that's an interracial marriage, you may need a lawyer. So I could help you. We don't need an office there. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Just give us a call, 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Hi, I am interested in EB-5 investors visa. Can you give me professional guidance? I am from India. Okay. India is what India and China are the two countries, Vietnam, India, Vietnam, uh, at one time Burma because of their beautiful stones, but now it's really bad out there. So um, absolutely, uh, EB-5 is 800,000, but the most important reason why Indian nationals want an EB-5 green card is because if you do a perm, EB-3 or EB-2 perm, it takes 10 years. I mean, perm is one year, but it takes 10 years. If you do an EB-1, quota open, but it's very difficult to get EB-1. Even the national interest waiver and the STEM 01 is still EB-2 and is still closed. That's why people are looking at the EB-5 because if quota open, you can directly adjust. It's a new thing that just came out from Biden in May of last year. So the quota may be closed. I just checked EB-5 quota yesterday, but if it's closed, you can still come to America on a tourist visa, leave and come back. But if it's open, the most important thing about EB-5 India, it's you could do adjustment of status and get a work permit and travel. So technically you can come on the tourist visa after 90 days, apply for EB-5 and the 485, get the parole and a work permit. You can go out to India, do your business and come back. But in the meantime, at least you can come because once you do EB-5, it's very difficult to get tourist visa to come again. That's the, the problem with the EB-5 from India or China and from Vietnam. Um, any questions, call me. We do a lot of EB-5 cases. Okay. Thank you so much uh, to uh, Bishop Kingsley. Uh, thank you so much for your question. And please, just give us a call. I don't know in what city you are in the United States, but the attorney Maria W. Wong has a lot of people and people uh, even from India that can help you with your case and that can help you give you guidance with your uh, request for the EB-5 investors visa. So just give us a call, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. I entered illegally under 18, now I am 19. I would like to join the army. If I do that, could I get my green card? Yes, but uh, I would look talk to different recruiters. I have clients who just told me, oh, I talked to someone, they, they won't let me recruit. And then uh, they went to another branch, especially a National Guard, now they let, normally they recruit people who have at least a get a work permit. I don't know if you have a work permit, um, but talk to different branches, absolutely. They do get green card faster and they do get citizen faster. Not only that, you can actually help your parents get a PIP. 
which is very good. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, don't forget that the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Uh, I was trying to uh, text back to this person that just sent us that question about the EB-5, and just in case, because it's not uh, one of the live uh, questions, uh, but I needed to respond that because this person says, I cannot be in the show, but I will be working at that time. So I hope you can uh, call the office. The next question is, um, I am applying for the U visa as a person, American person tried to abuse. Um, now I got my green card, uh, I got my U visa and I'm trying to apply for my green card but I don't know if I want to stay in the United States or if I want to leave. So what happens if I get my green card and I leave the United States for at least one year to get treated? Okay, the, the thing is, a green, until you become a citizen, a green card means that you actually should live in America for the next five years. We do have a lot of clients that have jobs there. The pain is so powerful, they need to be close to their parents. So what you need to do is apply for a re-entry permit. On the day of the application, when you file the I-131, you should be in America because it's Federal Express. Oh, you can also do it in e-filing now. I personally don't like e-file, but if you like e-file, you can, as long as you're in America on the day of the filing, number one. Number two is you don't need to be in America when you get the receipt notice. Number three, when you get the fingerprint notice, you need to be in America to do the fingerprint. So if some clients, after we file, they fly out and join their family, they fly back in for the fingerprint. Now, for example, you live in Cleveland, right? But on the other hand, if you are flying to Australia or China, or Hong Kong or India, Guam is closer. You don't have to come back to Cleveland for the fingerprint. You can actually go to Guam, you know, Guam or, or somewhere, Seattle, you know, the, the, the border cities or New York. So you don't really have to just come back in, do the fingerprint. Nowadays, the I-131 is taking about one and a half years. So if you want to expedite it, you need to enclose such a plane ticket and say, I'm leaving, especially if you need it for a travel, like the old Soviet Union. After the war, the Berlin Wall fell, uh, the old Soviet Union was gone. So there are countries that you can't get a passport because they because you're from the old Soviet and now you couldn't get a passport. So you need to explain it's a travel document. They may expedite. Now, New York is the only city, 26 Federal Plaza, not even Buffalo or Syracuse. They may or may not front office. You bring in a, a one-way ticket. You bring the receipt of the I-90. You get an emergency letter and say you have to travel and a valid passport. Sometimes front desk, they may give it to you, but don't don't I'll get yelled at if we if we publicize this, but sometimes they'll do it. New York is the only place. Because, but that was, I don't know if they'll do it now because after COVID, things are changing. But for, for years they would do that. That's an emergency. So don't give up your green card. I mean, you know, people spend a million dollars. Uh EB5 is eight hundred thousand. It still takes people four or five years to get green card. Now that you already got it, don't give it up. You spend years in America. Mm -hmm probably undocumented, going through a lot of pain. So don't think about giving it up. But you could travel. If you didn't get the green card yet, get a parole in and out, you should only uh, leave for one or two weeks. But if you got the green card, you can. Uh, you need to come back once every six months. But if you get the re-entry permit, it starts from the day after you get the re-entry permit, but the last entry and departure from America, you can come back once every two years, once you get the re-entry permit. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your answers today and all the knowledge that you share with all our audience. And please don't forget that you can call. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. The attorney, Margaret W. Wong, will be happy to take care of your case to help you in your immigration uh, case. And the phone number is just one, 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984, the attorney, Margaret W. Wong. Ms. Wong, our time is up. Thank you so much for having us today and see you probably next week. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Don't forget the phone number, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. And this one will be in the city of Columbus, Ohio tomorrow. And also Monday will be in New York. Tuesday and Wednesday will be in North Carolina and Raleigh. North Carolina, and Thursday and Friday she will be in the city of Nashville. So the phone number if you need to make an appointment is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984, attorney Margaret W. Walker. See you next time. Have a good lunch, and thank you so much for having us today. Thank you.